I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series for grade 7 and grade 8 students. You can always register for my courses on the website globalmathinstitute.com or send me an email on the given address. In this video, we'll talk about rates and we'll solve problems using rates. So we'll first discuss what are rates, what is the difference between rates and ratios, what are equivalent rates, how do we find unit rate, calculate rates in different ways, distance, speed, time is an example of rate, and then we'll have some practice test questions. So let's begin with the basic concept about rates. Rates is basically a comparison of two quantities measured in different units, right? So that is what the rate is. So whenever you have a comparison, and when the units are different types of units, right? In that case, what we get is a rate. Remember, rate has units, right? Now, rate is often written with a slash, which you can see here, like kilometers per hour, meters per second, right? So this slash is read as per, right? So this is kind of important word, meaning for each or for every, right? So meters per second or kilometers per hour. So you see that word per, which is the slash, correct? So you can associate the slash with per. So let's take an example to understand this concept. So in this example, we'll talk about Sam drove his car at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour, right? You understand now the rate? Kilometers per, that slash, will be read as per hour, okay? So now, when we have Sam drove his car at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour, it really means what? It means 80 kilometers per hour is read as first thing 80 kilometers per hour, right? So this slash is per. That is what we're trying to emphasize here. Now, what does that mean? It means that the distance of 80 kilometer was completed in an hour. So 80 kilometers per hour means that a distance of 80 kilometers on average was covered in an hour, right? So the word on average is also very important. So on average, 80 kilometer was driven in every hour. It also means that, right? So when I say how much distance will be covered in two hours, two times 80, 160, correct? Three hours, three times. In half an hour, half of 80. That is the basic concept, right? So once you have the rate, you can have a proportion with that, right? You can escalate it. You can scale it. That is, we'll talk about rates with ratios. Now, note, very important difference between ratios and rates. When we talked about ratio, ratio is comparison of quantities in the same units, right? So, uh, emphasize should be given on these two words, same units and different units. Do you see that? So, when it is different units, it is rates. And when it is same units, it is ratio. So, ratio, the same units cancel out. So we don't have units, right? So we have, it does not have units for ratios, but for rates, we always have units. Okay, so now let's talk about the equivalent rates, right? Just as we had equivalent ratios. So we'll talk about equivalent rates. Rates representing the same comparison is called equivalent rates, correct? So that is what it is. Well, here's an example. Write each comparison as an equivalent rate. So it's an exercise for us. Okay, let's try to do this. So first one is 10 pops cost $12. So what could be equivalent to this? Well, if 10 costs $12, then 20 will cost how much? So 20 pops will cost how much? You can say $24, right? Double the amount. You could do 5 will cost $6. That could also be fine, right? Now, I say a bag with 10 apples cost $15. In that case, two bags for $30. Is that correct? We could write like this. So that becomes an equivalent rate. Peter walked 10 kilometers in 50 minutes. 
So we say 10 kilometers in 50 minutes. We could write this one kilometer in five minutes. Do you see how easily we found the equivalent rate? So you can have a proportion to get equivalent rate. So one thing is you can have proportion or scale factor to get equivalent rates, right? So the last one is five liters of gas will cost $525. You could also write like this, dollars per liter. So you could write 5.25 divided by five liters. So in that case, it comes to dollar 1.05 per liter. So you could write the other way also. So basically, rates have units and it could be written as five liters of gas costs dollar 525. You could say 525 dollars will buy five liters or per liter the cost is one dollar five cents. So either way it can work, right? Now this is an example a solution for what we just did. So you could even write like this as shown in this particular uh, slide. You can actually pause the video at this time, look into the solutions which are written here and then move on. Now let's talk about unit rates. Unit rates means rate per unit, per kilometer, per unit of time, right, per hour, so per piece. So those kinds of rates are called rates per unit. They really help, correct? So rates per unit of a quantity is called a unit rate. Unit rates are used to compare rates of two quantities, right? So if I have different kinds of packages, right? So let's say we have two boxes, right? So we have, a, let's say, a dollar five for, let's say, 500 grams. Let's take very easy values, correct? And we have dollar six for, let's say, 750 grams. Then, which is better buy, right? Let's say we have the same thing, right? We're talking about popcorn. Okay. So dollar five for 500 grams, dollar six for 750 grams, right? So now which is cheaper? So you can only compare the rate per gram, how many dollars? You get the idea? So per gram, how many dollars will tell you which is cheaper? So which is the best buy? To find that, what is important is to calculate the unit rate. So for one unit of gram, how much will be the cost, right? So that is what will give us the cost. So in the first case, it is going to be dollars. So you can also say per kg, for example, right? You could do that. Or we can say dollars per gram. So we get 5 over 500, right? This is per gram. So that is dollars per gram. Is that clear? Here, it will be dollar six per 750 grams. So you can now find the ratio. And clearly, this is a better buy. It is cheaper, right? So it is less pay, less cost, less expensive. So it is a better buy, right? So for dollar six, with dollar five, you get five hundred dollar six will give you this variety only six hundred. But here we are getting seven fifty grams. Correct? You could compare the other way also. Okay. That is to say, what I was trying to do is dollar five five hundred grams. So this dollar six for six hundred grams. Correct? On the other hand, for dollar six, I get seven fifty grams more value, right? For the same money. So that is a better buy. Now you can compare this using unit rate. The example will illustrate. Three shirts cost $1.60. Write unit rate for the shirt. Then find the cost of five shirts. So that is a useful way of solving word problems. Okay. Unit rate means to find the cost of one shirt. Now three shirts cost $60. Then one shirt should cost one third, right? Makes sense. One third. 
So cost of one shirt is 60 divided by 3, which is $20. And what we get here is $20 per shirt. So that is the first part when we found the cost, unit cost, cost of one shirt. Now we need to find the cost of five shirts. That should be five times. So the cost of five shirts is five times 20, $100. You see how easy it becomes to find the unit rate and then the rate for anything else, right? Here is a distance time speed example. So rates per unit of a quantity is called unit rates, right? Unit rates are used to compare rates of quantities. Proportional rates can easily be calculated from unit rates. Last time we multiplied by 5 to get our answer, correct? Example 4. Peter drove 120 kilometers in 3 hours. At this rate, how much distance will he drive in 8 hours? Okay, so let's find the unit rate. 120 divided by 3 hours gives you 40 kilometers in 1 hour. So Peter is going 40 kilometers per hour. So in 8 hours, it will be 8 times 40. Correct? Makes sense. So that is 320 kilometers. Perfect. That is how we can solve questions based on rates. So first find the unit rate and then find what is required. It helps. Here we have practice questions for you. You need to find the unit rates for all the four cases given. The answers are given at the end, right? So first thing, pause the video, find the unit rates. So it's a practice question, calculate the unit rates. $1.72 for six books. What is the cost of one book, right? So you have to find the rate for dollar amount for one book, right? Per book, you can say that you don't have to write one, that slash gives you per, which means one, right? So per book. That's what it means. 75 kilometers in 90 minutes. You may like to convert this to hours, right? So we need to find how many kilometers per hour. Then earnings of dollars, 120 in four hours, right? So it is dollars per hour. Dollar five for four liters of milk. So it is per liter. Cost per liter of milk. This is what is meant by unit rate. So you may use calculator to divide the numbers and get the unit rate, right? And then check with my solutions later. Now let's talk about another method of solving word problems. And in this case, we are going to use proportions. So applications of proportions in rates. Rates for different quantities can be calculated by writing proportions with unknown quantities. Example for you is, Cindy earns $100 for every four hours of work. Calculate the earnings in a week with the work time of 32 hours. So we can scale the factor, you get the idea. So let the earning for 32 hours be X amount. So we just define a variable, let's say X. We don't know how much, right? So that is the X value. Now, we could actually have the ratio, or rather rates with different units. So we have $100 for four hours. That is what is given to us, right? $100 for four hours. Now, how many dollars for 32 hours? That is what the question is. So you write like a ratio, proportion, right? So proportion is rates with equal to sign in between. So you are talking about equivalent rates now, okay? Now you can calculate X. Clearly, in this particular case, we know that it is eight times, right? Times eight, four times eight is 32. Therefore, I'll multiply 100 by eight and get the answer as 800. Does make sense to you? So it is a multiplication factor by 8 to get the right side. And that is how proportions help to find the new rate. Okay. Based on this, we have four questions for you. So these are your test questions. You can pause the video, answer these questions, and then later look into my suggestions. Question number one. One dozen eggs 
cost six dollars find the cost of 30 eggs right now remember what is one dozen well one dozen equals to 12 right so 12 eggs cost six dollars find the cost of 30 eggs question number two three cars have 12 wheels how many wheels will seven cars have question three they walks 28 kilometers in seven hours at this rate how much time will it take to walk 10 kilometers right simple and the last question for you is anil drove 200 kilometers at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour how much time could he save by driving at an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour so instead of 80 if he is driving at the speed of 100 kilometers per hour how much time will he save so you can pause the video answer these questions then look into my suggestions well here are solutions well these are the solutions of the previous question which we asked for right finding unit rates correct so basically we have provided you with the answers here you can check your answers with these given here that should help now these are the solutions to the questions asked later the four questions asked right so when we say one dozen x cost six dollars it really means what 12 x cost six dollars so one egg will be six divided by 12 which is 50 cents and 30 will be 50 cents times 30 which is 15 dollars so that is how you can easily find the solution so likewise let's do the others three cars have 12 wheels one car will have 12 divided by 3 which is 4 and 7 will have 7 times 4 which is 28 wheels correct third question they walk 28 kilometers in 7 hours so 1 kilometer in how much 7 divided by 28 right 1 kilometer will take lesser time so divide because less time but 10 kilometers more time multiply 2.5 hours last question is very tricky anil drove 80 kilometers at an average speed of uh, anil drove 200 kilometers at an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour how much time could he save by driving at an average speed of 100 kilometers per hour see let's try to understand the definition 80 kilometers per hour means what one kilometer in 1 by 80th hour 80 kilometers in one hour see like this what we have here is 80 kilometers in one hour right so one kilometer will be divided by 80 that is what i've written right and now we want two point we want 200 kilometers so 200 kilometers will be multiply this 1 by 80 with 200 so when you do that 200 times 1 by 80 is 2.5 hours right so we get two and a half hours for the distance of 200 kilometers on the other hand if he's driving at 100 kilometers per hour that really means one kilometers in one over 100 so 200 will be multiplied by 200 200 divided by 100 is 2 as you know so we get the time 2.5 and 2 hours the time difference is 0.5 hours or 30 minutes so that is how it could be answered so i hope that helps with that we come to an end of our video on rates problems so with that you get plenty of practice test examples as well as the concept Feel free to write a comment, share your views, and if you like, and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Look for other videos in your math class relevant curriculum. Hope you find them interesting and useful. Thanks for your time.